over to Bo's Review. Tonight, we're going to review one of the most available Irish whiskeys on the market. And which whiskey is that? It's one from the old Bushmills Distillery Company, now owned by Casa Cuervo. And they are in where? Bushmill, Northern Ireland, which I think is in the county Antrim, I think is how it's pronounced. Yeah, I'm not so up on those pronunciations. Anywho, so what is it? That's right, it's there. Bush Mills Original or White Label, also known as White Bush. It's so popular and so omnipresent, I guess it's got three names. So, like I mentioned, it's an Irish whiskey. It's a year round serving. It clocks in at 40% ABV or 80 proof. And the single malt that's in this blend is aged for at least three years. At one time, it was aged for at least five years. So, it's a blend of single malt and neutral grain spirits. And I would imagine, since this is a really lightweight whiskey, there's way more neutral spirits in here than there is actual single malt, but you know what? That's how it goes because this bottle cost me 20 bucks. Hey, you know, Bushmills is, as you probably know, the oldest distillery in Ireland. It started its license anyway in 1608, and it started hardcore distillery probably around like 1784, if memory serves. It doesn't always because I drink a lot of whiskey and beer, stuff like that. So, you know, I forget things. Anywho, so what about ingredients in this whiskey? This whiskey is a blend, like I said, of single malt and neutral spirit. You know, we've got our, our, you know, our blend there, blended whiskey. But they're using, when they make their grain base, they're using a blend also of malted and unmalted barley. They triple distill it. That's their tradition in Ireland. So, because they want to make a, a light and easy to drink sort of distillate in the end. And they age this in American oak or ex bourbon barrels, and that's about it. So, um, I like Bushmills. I've been drinking for a really long time. I'm not a newbie in this one, but you know what? We've let it open up here, and let's talk about the appearance. It's a lovely golden caramel color. Oh, maybe it's because of the caramel coloring that they add to it to make it consistent. That is legal in the uk ireland and europe to add i think it's like they call it like e140 caramel coloring or something but it's caramel coloring a derivative of sugar basically so when i swirl it in the glass here we're getting tons of alcohol legs tearing down nicely in this glass wow stereotypic sort of tearing but take a look at that lovely golden liquid in the glass but it's got to smell good too so it's not going to have a big aroma from what i can remember but we're going to dive in anyway for the aroma well, I always get tons of green, fresh apple, like Granny Smith apple, from Bushmills. And Irish whiskey at that now of this type, that Jameson as well. A bit of hay, some citrus, maybe like lemony. Some grain back in there, some phenolic alcohol. Some vanilla, a little bit of caramel. These are fainter aromas. Maybe some light barrel char. But that green apple for me in this particular whiskey especially is always omnipresent in the nose. But you know what? It's got to taste good too. So let's dive in. Salante, wow. It's not a big flavor. Right up in front, I get that hit of green apple. After that, the caramel comes in. Quite warming going down the chest medium thin sort of mouthfeel to it it's got a decent viscosity it's not super super thin there's a spice to it a bit of clove as i was drinking in i was breathing i'm getting more of that clovey sort of spiciness on the aroma as well a bit of bitterness in there you know there's these are second use or reused bourbon barrels so some more of those tannic notes are going to come out out of those barrels as they've aged and keep using them because all like the vanilla and the caramel and those other flavors they get when they are bourbon barrels originally those have been sucked out by the bourbon especially if it spends a long time in there it's light it has a dry finish on the palate in the back end it's a nice caramel sort of like kind of kiss in the back end and some of that hay going on and, and grassiness it's a nice smelling whiskey. It's something I usually use more for, you know, as a mixed item in, into a cocktail, some maybe uh, like a whiskey and Coke or, you know, whatever other. I actually make Baileys with this as well. The homemade, I guess maybe you want to call it Irish cream, but 
Not bad. Now I'm going to put a little water in here. I usually do not do this with Bushmills because it's such a light whiskey. I, I kind of think of the same way as I think with tequila. It's better just straight up by itself, but we'll do a little bit for happenstance. That's it. Just one eyedropper of that. Give it a bit of a swirl. It softens the nose even more, and it actually brings the citrus and a little bit of the vanilla up. And slightly, some really faint char and grassy notes are coming up more as well. Let's dive in for this. With water, it lightens up the taste, I think. I prefer it just straight up. Um, the Bushmills 10-Year is a really fine product, and, the, and Bushmills Black, I like that better as well. That's got more flavor complexity. This is pretty much straightforward. Like a caramel, that apple, a bit of hay, and a little bit of spiciness and some really faint vanilla and grassiness and that's about it but for what it is by the by for a really inexpensive uh you know spirit i think it's got some really nice flavors that you know what complement other things as you drink this you get i get like a bit of bitterness building even more i guess that's also coming probably from the way they store the neutral spirits and wood barrels you know those those are ex-used barrels that maybe they aren't using to age the uh, you know, single malt stuff anymore, and it's drawing out those sort of tannic and bitter notes, but that tannic and bitterness would, plays actually well within a cocktail when you have sweetness as kind of a parry for the sweeter and, you know, sugary type items that you put into cocktails. So, you hear me waffling on, it's not a bad beverage, it's not a mind blower, but it's, it's also something that's really inexpensive and highly accessible. You don't have to, like, you know, mug somebody to, to get a bottle of this. So, what do we grade this? Let me get one more taste. I think I'm going to go in the B- minus range. I'm going to go like 83, 84, somewhere in that range. It's tasty. I've been buying it for years. I keep drinking it, so it must not be all that bad. But I've had Irish whiskeys that have a lot more, more flavor development and things of that sort to them. So, have you had Bushmills Original White Label, a.k.a. White Bush, have you had it? If you have, let me know what you know because I like the quid pro quo and the back and forth. I also really like it when you do what? That's right, think globally, drink locally, and support the, I don't know if this is a craft beer, but support that craft spirit and cocktail movement too. Also, if you could do me a big favor and rate, comment, subscribe, especially if you're your first time with us, and if you can kind of get round to it, I don't know, maybe consider smashing that like button because that, along with I'm only going to need one dram of Bushmills Original also known as White Label, also known as White Bush. And you know what? That's all I'm going to need to put my big ass ah, kicking it and drinking some whiskey. Happy face on. So it's the next DJ Brew Tube. I got nothing but a hell of a bunch of Bush Mills, original White Label, White Bush, whatever name you prefer, drinking love for you, and you know what's coming. That's right. I'm going to give it to you. Big ass. <laughs>